Hello and welcome back, everybody. Episode seven. Seven? Seven. Episode seven of Some Low Grade Gamers. As always, it is the collaboration between Some Kind of Gaming, consisting of myself and the lovely Laura over here. Hi. And the low grade gamer himself, Mr. Dan. How you doing, Dan? Happy New Year, everybody. As you can see, I'm very festive today. Sorry I didn't ask you how you're going, Laura. I just kind of live with you, so I already know. You're forced to know. Uh, good, though. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, guess what? Guess what, everybody? This what? week, we are actually joined by a new person. We're broadening our horizons. Insanity, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I'm pretty good. How about you? Uh, fantastic. Yeah, no one ever asked me how I'm doing. I always ask you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks. I appreciate it. Good vibes already. Yes. Well, Dan, you might be replaced. You better watch out. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's in trouble. <laughs> Insanity, tell us a little bit about yourself. Do you, are you a Twitcher? Are you a YouTuber? What do you play? What consoles are your favorite? How'd you get into gaming? Whatever you want. Sure thing. Um, I am a, a mom, uh, first of all, wife, um, also from originally from Puerto Rico. Um, I am a Twitch streamer, a uh, very small st- Twitch streamer, but um, just doing it for fun. I uh, like to play and meet new people. And currently I've been delving into Fortnite a lot. Um, also have played some Halo. Um, also Gears. Gears was a very big one when I started playing um, a few years back. Uh, but I've been playing since Atari. Um, so oh, I've nice. had Atari. I've had the original NES. I've had Sega, the original Sega. Um, oh, I got into Sega, unfortunately. I original I Sega. Around. Yeah, it, I mean, I'm talking 1986. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that fizzled out by the time I was like old enough to hold a controller, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, transitioned over to PlayStation 1. Also had a PlayStation 2. When PlayStation 3 came out, it was way expensive. Moved over <laughs> yeah. to Xbox. Um, so I've had Xbox 360, Xbox One, now Xbox Series X. And we were one of the lucky few that actually got a PS5 recently. So oh, nice. every yeah, have every console out there so far. You have a switch as well? Yes. Have a switch oh, as well. Yes, yeah, like the big three. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Lucky. Yeah, we will actually talk about that uh, supply issue with the the new gen consoles later. So that was a, a nice little plug for that one. But for the moment, I think we're going to kick things off with a bit of Goldeneye on the Xbox. So Laura and I don't have an Xbox. Uh, we didn't have them when we were young and we don't have them now. We're, we're PlayStation gamers. So Xbox fanatics, you two. Tell us, tell us what's, what the word on the street is. Well, so this is epic. This is very exciting for me because I grew up with GoldenEye. I still remember having four controls set up, my mates coming over and absolutely smashing GoldenEye. Like that is a vivid Epic. memory in my head. One of my friends hit their head on the light. It was great, right? <laughs> that's, that's my vivid memory of GoldenEye. So the really... <laughs> cool thing about this is nobody thought it would happen they did attempt a remaster a little while ago but due to licensing and other bits and pieces it failed for the xbox release so yes that's why i thought it wasn't released anywhere yet because i say i don't have an xbox but i played it on the 64 obviously like that's where it's from um yeah i thought the licensing was just way too complicated and that's why it would never happen it appears this is this is my theory anyway. Considering the collaboration that Microsoft and Nintendo have sort of been doing in relation to the current, yep. uh, well, previous, many previous gen games. They're more in, friendly than yeah, any of the other companies. Yeah, like Banjo-Kazooie as an example, that is owned by Rare, which is the, the it's same. It's now an the, Xbox studio. Uh, 007 Golden Eyes, yes, now Xbox Studios, which Banjo-Kazooie is actually releasing on the Nintendo Switch under the uh, Nintendo 64 Switch Online yes. service. Okay. Very soon that's happening. Yes. Uh, we just quickly interject and uh, 
express our frustrations that Xbox just seemed to waste Rare. Rare was like the best studio of all time back in the day, and Xbox bought them, and they've done like nothing. That's because they're busy working on Halo, which had the best campaign I've ever played in my life. What, Rare and... was for what, 30 years? No, <laughs> well, uh, Xbox have been busy doing Halo. Rome wasn't built in a day, Tom. Yes. <laughs> Should have been. The fact that they are getting, right, because what we've seen so far is multiple achievements. Now, for those of you that don't know, achievements are like little things that you unlock while playing games on the Xbox and or everybody's got. I think PlayStation has trophies. Trophies on PlayStation. Yeah, mm. which, you know, not as good an idea, but, you know, good on them for trying. I, I don't <laughs> see the point of them at all, but that's just me. Yeah, so, well, some people are really into the achievement side of oh, things. Trophy yeah. hunters and achievement hunters. Oh, that's just yeah. not not for me. No, I Play games, me. play the game, not to get awards. Yeah, I mean, I see the achievement. I go, oh, yeah, a little bit of a dopamine hit, righto. And yeah, on. I'm always like, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Had. yeah. But what we've been seeing is multiple achievements coming out for GoldenEye. So yeah, just screenshots of them, correct? Screenshots of these achievements. So what appears to be the case is it's the Nintendo 64 version, not actually a remastered like was originally thought. Now, my theory behind this is because Nintendo are obviously pushing their 64 service as much as possible, and let's be realistic, it is really not fantastic. So my thoughts... I would say it's fantastic, just just subpar. Yeah, below subpar. And... (laughs) I mean, I play 64 games on it, I like it. Yeah, oh, look, we've talked about it before, there's things I don't like. Yeah. But Online services average. The 64 thing is fine. The whole aspect of it, I think, is Microsoft and Nintendo potentially working together to get these licenses over the line so they can both release the... I, I, and I believe it will just be the 64 version. I do not believe it will be a remaster. I think mm-hmm. that's too hard. true to it. So that is the current news, and it looks pretty credible from what I've... Yeah, I would love to believe it, but I just don't want to get my hopes up. Like, what probably one of the defining shooters back in, the, along with Doom, I would say, like Doom and Golden Eye define what we know as shooters today. Mm. Define the death match and the team death matches, and I, I just I've been disappointed too many times, <laughs> you know. But I, I look. I, I would love for it to happen. Yeah, I'm, it would be I'm hopeful, awesome. but I'm just skeptical. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Who actually owns the 007 franchise? Is it is it Warner Brothers? Good question. Because it's yeah, not it a is. game. Maybe the Queen. It's not a gaming franchise. It's like a no. Movie. I think that's why it's so hard to get the license because it's not like even a gaming. The problem, thing. Yeah. The problem I believe is around appearance. So they need to get the license for the appearance of the actors. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. okay so yeah. whoever Bond was in Goldeneye in the Is movie, Brosnan? I'm not super familiar with the Bond it, films. I'm sorry. Possibly. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure. So, yeah, okay, yeah. See, that makes sense. It's not actually gaming IPs mm. is the problem. It's the fact that they're, they're movies. It's, it's, yeah. it's the movie and the and the actors' faces, from my understanding. I think it was Pierce yeah. Brosnan, Brosnan. I could be wrong. But, and I'm I probably, believe you. I, I'm probably wrong. I'm not huge on James Bond. But I am huge on the 64 game. I loved it. Yeah. Especially that first mission. I don't know if anybody remembers it. But you literally. Oh, it's been a long time. You literally just bungee jump off into a dam randomly oh, right cool. at the end. I yeah, just nice. Completely love that. Awesome. The main thing I remember from it is the golden gun. I haven't actually played it, eh? But, oh, wow. You've got a lot to look forward to. I know, yeah. <laughs> I've been fired. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired from the podcast. Get rid of it. Well, so hopefully it comes to the N64 service because then... You can play it for the first time. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. I've right. got so much to look forward to, right? Mm-hmm. Silver lining yes. everywhere. 100%. Yeah, that's the thing. Don't, don't don't hate on people who haven't played games. Just they've got so much more to look forward yeah. to. Have you played it, Insanity? I have not. 
Oh, well, yeah. it's okay. We can be fired together. <laughs> So it's going to be. We're going to make our own spin off podcast over here. Yeah. In the exactly. Well, it seems like Dan's the one being fired now, actually. He's just fired the rest of us. So. <laughs> I didn't fire No, him you haven't that. been fired. No, I fired him, though, remember? You've. Because <laughs> insanity is nicer. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, okay. All right, guys. Oh, starting yeah. next week, I'm All starting right. my own podcast. It's going to be called <laughs> The Text. Something or other. <laughs> We've got uh, some kind of insanity next week, guys. That's uh, the, the new IP around these parts. It's a cool name, actually. <laughs> that's you. way better than some low-grade game. What's no, that that's about? also a cool name. <laughs> nah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> anyway, that's enough uh, <laughs> hanging crap on each other. <laughs> uh, it's been fun, though. <laughs> so last week we gave ourselves a little bit of homework. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and a game called Fata Morgana, the house in Fata Morgana, was in the top rated games of 2021 on, according to Metacritic. Yes, Metacritic. And we were ashamed that we hadn't played them. I had heard of House in Fata Morgana. We've obviously all heard of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then somehow Laura got roped into playing Farming Simulator. Yeah. I think it was the simulator conversation. Yeah, I think so. Mm. And seeing as though Insanity wasn't here last week and didn't get any homework of her own, unfortunately. Sorry about I I, I didn't know you were coming. Uh, otherwise, I would have given you some homework. <laughs> <laughs> but we thought Insanity would kick this segment off with her own little spin, as she mentioned in the beginning, plays a lot of Fortnite. We don't, <laughs> to put it simply. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, please don't attack me, everybody. I know Fortnite fans are like a pack of angry dogs sometimes, <laughs> as all game fans can be. Uh, but It's passion. It's called yes, passion. passion. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> so season three recently came out. Yes. Tell us about it. The island's flipped. So it, the island is flipped. So it's mean? it's almost as if it was kind of like a twist on this underworld type of thing. So based cool. on, yes, it's <clears throat> really interesting. Um, so basically what they've done is they've kind of brought back a lot of the old um, map areas um, that used to be there before in previous seasons. And also we have the founder now that is uh, portrayed by The Rock. Um, so pretty neat to have it there. Yes, pretty neat to have it <laughs> there. Everyone's in Fortnite. It's ridiculous. It is, it is. Um, the nice thing is that with this season, uh, what they've actually been able to do is they've added... Um, sliding so a lot of people yeah, have that. been yes a lot of people have been talking about the issue with you know having the contrast between cod and fortnite a lot of cod players also play fortnite and vice versa and not having that option of sliding when you're trying to do uh, any type of uh, maneuvers within the game so finally they brought in sliding um and it's pretty decent sliding as well um so it's not as short as cod is concerned yep. um a lot of new uh weapons um automatic shotguns um pretty cool. decent um still have the pump shotgun um have a couple of ars one that is um the ranger ar which is a less uh, uh the um, fire rate is less than the MK7 um, AR. Um, but the, pretty what's neat. An AR? Um, the automatic rifle. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Um, Sorry. No, no, no worries. Um, <laughs> they also have a smaller SMG, which is really nice. Um, pretty quick uh, fire rate. Um, and what, what, what's an SMG? Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. sorry, I, I <laughs> don't really play shooters or, or the guns. I'm my bad. No, <laughs> like a smaller 
version of a machine gun with generally uh, less damage if we're talking real world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Less damage okay. in terms of bullets, but the fire rate on those things is absolutely insane. Yeah. Fair enough. Exactly. Um, so have, has all of that uh, good stuff. Um, and actually today, um, or at the end of the year, they actually came out with some leaks with regards okay. to a no build limited time um, mode. Which oh, nice. for us, no, not no builders, because I, yeah. I do not fort, I only knight. For us that don't fort, um, we'll be able to actually play um, for a limited time at least. Uh, it's still a leak, but apparently the leak comes from a very um, um, good uh, leak person. So all the leaks that this person has ever put out have actually come out. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to have a, at least a limited time of no build. Um, so it's going to be really interesting. I hope mm. they don't keep that as a limited time thing because, uh, like, look, they're, they're not my type of games in general, but... When I first, I've obviously played Fortnite. When I first played it, I was like, aha, I've got you. And then it's just like, wall. All of a sudden, somebody's like 20 floors above you. And I'm like, uh, what yes. is going on? And then you, you get shot and you die. And it's like, hey, I was going to shoot you first, man. This, <laughs> yes. this game's about shooting people, not like. Walling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wall, yeah, walling. So I would, yes. I would, be, I would have, be really interested in. I, like, I get it's a big mechanic and, you know, that's important, but especially as, like, an introductory phase, I feel like not having that option and wrapping your head around every... Because there's so much going on in that game. So much. so much. And, like, so just things to see as well. Like, you could just run around the map and be like, oh, that's cool. And, uh, like, the Daily Bugle and stuff is in there. Yes. From now. That like, is yes. Cool. Yeah, and very. you have the little Spider-Man hands too. So you yes, can swing is. everywhere. Can you swing? So you can swing. You can swing. swing. I you can will swing. admit that the swinging looks fantastic. You know, maybe you might have to play it and you might find yourself obsessed with Fortnite. Yeah, well, it's got like an aimer. So in the PlayStation Spider-Man, which I'm a huge fan of, uh, Miles Morales, I actually didn't eat and sleep for like two days. I just played that game. <laughs> and I was, yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> Laura's like, you need to eat something. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Uh, yeah, uh, but it's automatic. So you yeah. click a button and you just, your web shoots onto the nearest thing. And it's all easy and it's fluid and it's fantastic and it looks amazing. But yes. having that like pointer where you can like choose. Control. What to, yeah, just more control. So I really yes. hope. That Insomniac takes a little bit, I never thought I'd say this, but a little bit of leaf out of Fortnite's book and has, at least has the option, you know? Yeah, yeah. I really like the fluid. It's super easy, but if you want a bit more challenge, yeah, have the have the pointer and choose what you're swinging to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Even if it was like a Breath of the Wilds when you're like in the air and then you pull your bow out and the time like slows down oh, so yes. you have time to aim so you could do that like That would be very swing. cool. That would be mm. nice, yes. Or so is there, yeah, there's a whole yeah. section of the island that's just Spider-Man themed, isn't there? Yeah. So they have the the bugle. So that's yep. totally um, dedicated to it. But around the island, they have a, a few areas where you have Spider-Man or webs that you can actually bounce off. And oh, cool. in those areas, you can also find those little um, spider web um, hands. Um, yep. So you'll be able to catch them and grab them from there. So that's pretty neat um, to be yeah, able absolutely. to experience. Is that going to last all season? Or is um, it just like that's a good question. I think it's going to last all season since he is part of the battle pass. So yeah. he is the 10th page, basically. Um, so hopefully that will last the whole season. It will be nice to have it the whole season. Mm. Yeah, I agree. It uh, might even uh, tempt me to get back. In. I do love superheroes. The new Spider-Man movie is pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I might have to uh, look into that. I'm not going to lie. You, you may have convinced me insanity. Good job. I never nice. thought anybody would. Nice. 
<laughs> Let's get on to something a bit more boring then, apparently. <laughs> Dan, Microsoft Flight Simulator, one of the best games of 20 to all the highest rated games of 2021. Tell us about it. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, look, I think. I think it's coolish for somebody that. No, nah, actually, look. To be honest, for me, it was completely boring. Even flying over the pyramids of Giza. Oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, but I just didn't feel like there was enough detail in the pyramid to be cool enough. If it oh, makes okay. Sense. Like, if the... I thought it prided itself on the fact there was a ton of detail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nope. That says it all. Does it simulate the whole world? Look, I flew from Adelaide to Melbourne. Yep. That's an easy one. Which was really hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was, oh, I was so bored. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. It was hard as in to yeah. keep I kept keep trying to I kept trying to stall it and see a plane crash, but you don't actually get to see anything. It just oh, that's probably a good thing. Probably, but <laughs> be honest. Yeah. There'll probably a be a spin off called Airplane uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Crash Simulator. Oh god, yeah. I hope not, man. We don't need to recreate any plane crashes. Let's yeah, okay, honest. you're probably right. Probably yes. best yeah. to just stay clear of that. Eh? Yes, so, 100 <laughs> percent Look, it was it was cool in terms of so when I say detail, I mean details in flight detail. In the cockpit, yep. you can change bits and pieces. You can literally look at the accelerator, pull it in, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. But there was a point where I tried to crash into some houses and mm-hmm. I just sort of bumped it. And then that was it. I was stuck there for a while <laughs> in the okay. corner. <laughs> yeah, it, you had to honestly, read it. Yeah, honestly, it, for somebody who really enjoys flying, and I mean, you yeah. have to really enjoy the mechanics of flying. You have to like remove, you want to be a pilot. It, like you, you've literally got to remove all of the AI assistance from it to be okay. to be interesting. Because if you've got the AI assistance, it is way too easy. You hold the throttle down for long enough, and then you just take off i took off too early anyway and it still went okay because the ai stops you from stalling so yep. removing all of those things it does make it a little bit harder well a lot harder and so if you like it from in terms of that sort of detail but i am very big on on time time is a big thing for me being the business that, all it. that sort of stuff i really yep. try to make the most of my time so <laughs> You know, 20 minutes with my daughter is more important to me than flying to Parafield Airport. So, did you just you literally just sit there with the controller, like, yep. Yeah, I, I, I did try and do loop loops and stuff to keep myself entertained. But yes, yeah, so I, I yeah, flew I from don't Adelaide think it's Airport. That type of game, is it? Yeah, I flew from Adelaide Airport to Melbourne. Is it Telemarine? Yeah. 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 And yeah, that I did it for this podcast, and that yeah, I will never do it again. I've deleted it. A hundred gigabytes. A oh, hundred. Gigabyte. Yeah, it's big too. Yeah. Yeah, I had to delete Dragon Ball, so I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> not happy. I couldn't even cloud game it, so I was really. Oh no. Yeah, I was. I was very. Um, yeah, I was very testy afterwards, especially when I was yeah, there yeah. flying. I was like, I deleted Dragon Ball <laughs> to hold my control and do nothing. <laughs> but, but, it doesn't but, surprise me that you weren't a fan. I'm not going to lie. You're into your fast-paced action, a lot of shooters. It's it Look, it didn't seem like it was going to be a game for you, which was half the fun. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Yeah, no, that, that when you said you were going to play it, I was like, aha, that's going to be funny. <laughs> I mean, I do, and, uh, I do love strategy. Was. Like, I like strategy games and that sort of thing. So I play, yep. I've, I've been playing a lot of Halo Wars 2 
which is basically like Age of Empires, but Halo. So okay. I've been doing a, a lot of that. So, yeah, my games are sort of FPS or strategy games, yep. which obviously strategy games still have a lot of action going There's on. There's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah you've got you've got to keep thinking and keeps so, you busy. Yeah, so I mean, if I if I was really interested in being a pilot and I removed yep. all of the handicaps, then yeah, yep. I, I think it's really good, right? Like mm -hmm. you, I could tell that there was a lot of thought into flying the plane, which was which was really cool. But I yep. flew from, you know, I did do a flight from the airport and I landed on Henley Beach Road for a little bit, and then crashed, and then you know, then I did my Melbourne to. I mean, my Adelaide to Melbourne flight. But, yeah, the whole – and I did Giza because you can go straight there. There was no way yeah, that's in hell I was flying from Adelaide. Flying to Giza. <laughs> no. So, yeah, I mean, look, if – I think what would be really cool for somebody like me who is a very visual person as well, like I do – I do enjoy that sort of thing and I do enjoy documentaries quite a bit, I would have yep. preferred some really in-depth detail – in terms of the Pyramids of Giza. Now, mm -hmm. maybe there was a setting I didn't have on, but I don't think so. And yeah. it's, you know, I, yeah, I am running the Series X, so it's not like I, I'm running a slower Xbox or a slower PC no. or something like that. I'm literally running a Series X. So in terms of that sort of thing, I mean, yeah, look, there was no issue. The game worked. So, yeah. yeah. Well, look, there's a, it's a lot of world to build so yeah i guess you've got to if there's a couple bricks missing from a pyramid in order to have another pyramid in uh, mexico then fair enough I, I just think the seven wonders of the world should have been like pinpointed yeah true yeah fair enough i have no arguments here i mean i haven't played it so i trust you i trust your judgment it just if okay I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if it's gonna offend people. Like, I know you're not. You're not huge on it personally, but from take yourself away from that as a game, as what it's meant to do. Does it run well? Does it deserve yes. the accolades it has gotten? I think it deserves it if you're interested in flying as a pilot. And that's that's about it. Like the reason, okay, the reason I've got such a problem with the pyramid is because <laughs> I think the pyramid esque style things in Forza look ten times better. Now I understand Forza is not as big a game and blah blah blah, blah and it's a different thing. I don't care. I want a fancy <laughs> pyramid if I'm going to be flying from Adelaide to Egypt. Yeah, you know how long that flight takes. <laughs> Yeah, a long time, I couldn't imagine. Nine hours? No, oh, no, no, I didn't do it. I refused. <laughs> <laughs> long time. <I> love. <laughs> long time. So, yeah, yeah long that's time. my only point is if, you're, yeah. if you want to use it to see the world, if that makes sense, like, that would have been really yeah. cool for me because I do like that sort of stuff. I watch, you know, like National Geographic or Curiosity oh, Stream. If you don't have Curiosity Stream, there's a documentary streaming service it is really good they are yep. not sponsoring us even though they could if they would like they should mm. yes but, like yeah it's like netflix but documentaries it's it's really quite cool so like i watch and it's like 40 bucks a year or less less than that i think so yeah you know like i'm into that sort of thing so for me if the detail was a little bit more there i would have been a little bit more engaged with it but i'm gonna leave it there because i talked a long time again I was gonna say, yeah, so that so the Dan tangents insanity. That's what we're talking about. But what well, well what I does a documentary streaming service have to <laughs> <laughs> was farming simulator just <laughs> as boring, Laura? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh well, Dan. Look, I definitely understand where you're coming from, Dan. It's very realistic. And also it doesn't like give you a tutorial or explain to you how you are to like play the game. So I just like did it wrong heaps of times and I had to like, so you've got to go um, 
first of all, like when you're first playing the game, you get a certain amount of money and then you can like accept jobs from other farmers. So I was like, okay, great. I'm going to like buy a tractor and rent a trailer and then go spray fertilizer on this person's field. So I did it and I got my trailer and I got my tractor and I drove all the way to the field badly and also I chose like a farm in France or something so I was on the wrong side of the road the whole time <laughs> Good as. and then I got there and then I realized I didn't got any fertilizer <laughs> in it and you have to buy it at the shop so I had to drive my ass all the way back to the shop get the fertilizer fill it up and then I was finally able to fertilize this person's land and so then I was like all right well I'll do my second job so the second job was spraying. So I was like, all Speaking right. Speaking of, I'm going to spray that fly that's hanging around us. <laughs> yeah, there's a fly. That's very entertaining for those who are listening. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> to a <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I went to this other job with my tractor and my trailer. And then I and then I realized it wasn't the correct equipment. And I just didn't, there's no tutorial or anything. So then I drove my, I like, I found out how to fast travel to the shop. And so I left my trailer there and then I got oh, their, new, I hired their new equipment, drove back to the field. I forgot the bloody spray, <laughs> didn't I? So I to drive all the way back and I was like, why isn't there a tutorial? Maybe it's just meant to be like, I don't know, second nature, but maybe if you're a farmer, <laughs> which I'm not. That's the thing about Farming Simulator. There's a lot of actual real-world farmers that play it, apparently. It's definitely like real-world farming. Yeah, and I even I did get tempted as well to see if I could crash into things, Dan. And uh, that's how, you know, a game's like not that engaging when I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could like... Because I was driving on the, yeah, I was driving on the wrong side of the road and I didn't realize till like the last minute. So I'm like, oh, there's a car coming. I swerved onto the the right side. And eventually I was just, once I forgot my spray for the third time and had to drive all the way back, I was like, I wonder what happens if I crash into someone. And it's like bumper cars. You just like, oh. you just give each other a boop. So That's all. But you can knock over road signs. Mm. yeah yeah not many consequences from the from the crash there yeah so the last time i realized i'd forgotten the spray i was like screw this why am i even driving on the roads nothing happens when you crash your tractor anyway so i like drove it all the way down this cliff and then i got caught on a tree like the tree was in between my trailer and my tractor so i couldn't go forward and i couldn't reverse and i was like oh, i broke it is that where you quit the game? No, I had to Google it. I was like, oh, oh. Really? yeah. And then it turns out that you can just like reset the tractor and all those times I drove back to the shop, I didn't have to, but you live and you learn. <sighs> would have been nice for a tutorial, hey? Yeah, a, tu a tutorial would have been pretty nice. Half the time I was just kind of like wandering around confused. And like once you're in your tractor, you can't like get out. Uh, you can't like just get out of your tractor. So, so do you play as the dude or do you play are. as a tractor? You play as the farmer. Okay. But like, so yeah, once you you're sitting in your tractor, tractor, you can't like, like GTA. Huh? Do you get into the tractor like Grand Theft Auto or something? No, nah, no. Nah, you just go, you press enter and then poof, you're inside the tractor. Okay. So Will you ever play, play it again? I might. Probably not. No, probably not. Let's uh, be honest. Is it better and more tempting than something like the gorgeous fantastic stardew valley no stardew valley is definitely more engaging how did i know <laughs> is it like dan i'm gonna say like okay it's not necessarily your thing you're into like the indies and the you know the 16 bit pixels pixel style of something like stardew and and that, that kind of farming style so is it stepping away from that doesn't deserve the accolades that it has been given? I mean, like, it's a good farming simulator. It's very realistic. 
-hmm. So like you really are like simulating farming. Yes. Like it does what it says it does. Fair enough. I don't know if you've noticed insanity, but it's huge on Twitch. Yes, it is. I, yeah, it's not. I watched a little bit of it one time and I was like, okay. It's a pretty mundane yeah. experience, but I reckon if I had one of those things, like you've got your steering wheel and your little pedals and you're like, and that's how you drive the tractor, that could be really fun. Yes. Then I probably would have been like, woo, going down that cliff, you know? <laughs> yes. Oh, full VR setup. Yeah. Yeah. VR farming simulator. It looks beautiful. I was spraying a field of sunflowers and it was really nice. Well, I'm uh, I'm sorry you guys had average homework because I still liked it though. Like okay. it was still pretty fun. I still played it for a few hours. Like <laughs> I say that I probably won't play it again only because like I have so many games that I have to play. It's kind of like I feel like a bit snowed under with the games. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't, then maybe I would keep playing Farming Simulator. Okay. It's definitely not a bad game. Seven and a half out of ten. Not a bad. That's that's good. No, that's yeah, good. That's yeah, it's not bad. a bad game. Yeah. yeah, that's solid as. There's just a bunch of nines in your backlog. Yes, yeah. exactly. There's Fair nines enough. and tens in my backlog. Yeah. Well, again, I'm sorry you guys had such average homework because my homework, I said I would play the house in Fata Morgana. Is it the house of or the house in? The house in. Ah. Yes, I thought it was of as well. But no, it's the house in. It's great. <laughs> I tell really me, enjoyed it. Tell me about the game because so, I don't know what it is. Like, what do you, what do you do? Are you a okay? So I've yeah. never. Okay, so that this is this is where the gripes come into it straight off the bat. So my gripes with it is that it, it it's not really a game. It's not so much a game. I felt like I was not reading, but experiencing a novel on my Switch. It's a visual novel, right? It's a, yeah. yeah, it's a visual novel. Um, and I'd never played or had anything to do with any visual novels before. Um, yeah, go on, please, interject. Is it, uh, Have you seen the Walking Dead series that's sort of like a comic? No. I've seen the first episode of the Walking Dead show. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, no, there's a. I just wanted to know if it was similar to that. There's a game, a Walking Dead game, where it's sort of like a visual novel book thing. So, so this on. is literally, I got, I've had like one choice in like a couple of hours worth of gameplay. And it was like my character woke up and I could either say good morning or say nothing. Um, I said good morning because I'm a nice guy. Uh, I don't know if that affected anything. I'm pretty sure it didn't. I would have the same experience whether I said nothing. Uh, but I assume, uh, look, I, 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 I can't assume. I, that's a bit rude of me. I assume later on that like you, your choices actually play a role because you are able to skip everything until you get to a choice, which is ours. But for what it is and what it does, like you just you're just reading a book essentially mm -hmm. you're just but it's not reading it's experiencing because there's all these visuals uh i very much played it with my headphones on while i was in bed because i needed that like the ambience like the environment that the music creates very much plays into what's going on in the story and yeah so it's more of an experience than just a read and i really enjoyed it it was Look, it's not something I would sit down on a Saturday afternoon with my mates and play over a couple of beers, but it's definitely something I will be playing again when I go to bed, probably tonight. Well, it put you to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Like, which usually, is it's not a bad thing though. Like, it's just a relax. It's a, it's really no, a book. it's a good thing. Well, that's what we said when we were talking about it originally. That it's probably like a really good like relaxing experience yeah. and a good like I love cozy bedtime games. Yeah. Like and I love is, those games. It's hardly a game. Yeah. So, so it's like a cozy bedtime. And no. usually I always go to sleep before Tom, but he went to sleep before me. No, which is nice. I, yeah. I'm a little bit of an insomniac. I struggle sleeping. So to have a, like something that's both 
entertaining and calming and relaxing is really nice. Look, the story so far, it's it's, it's okay. Uh, I've played RPGs with better stories, but I've also completed those RPGs and I'm nowhere near completing Fata Morgana. Does it deserve all the credit it gets? Look, I've never played a visual novel and I never thought I would, and I'm really glad I did. So the fact that it, it's gotten me into that genre is like, that's pretty cool. If you guys, are, again, don't expect it to be a game, but if you're looking for something relaxed, especially on the Switch, because you can take it to bed with you, perfect, perfect place for those t- type of games, then, yeah, I, I, I recommend it 100%. Uh, does it deserve its score on Metacritic? Uh, I, I'm not sure yet is basically all I can say. I would have to finish the whole story. I'm sure there's twists and turns and, you know, uh, everything links in and it all makes a a hell of a lot more sense. But, yeah, so from what I've played, I I think it's great. And, yeah, I'm pretty grateful that I've played a visual novel now. It's a whole new genre of game, quotation marks, that I have experienced, which is, yeah, it's pretty cool. It is cool. Yeah. Have you guys ever played a visual novel before? No. Not at all. Just head shakes all the around. Closest, yeah, the closest thing would be that same um, Walking Dead game mm-hmm. um, where you kind of make decisions and that drives the rest of the gameplay. That's, okay. I think, the closest thing. Yeah, same same with me. I think... Uh, did, so, you, did you enjoy those experiences? Yeah, oh, I, yes. thought, I thought that yeah. was a good game. That was, that was, yeah, fun. So of the three I games that we played of our, for our homework, we have yep. one that we're going to continue playing after today, realistically. Look, Dan, if you had Fata Morgana, I don't think you would continue playing it, to okay. be completely honest. And, uh, like, unless you were looking for the same thing I was looking for with that, like, cosy bedtime story. Um and like, don't get me wrong, it's not all like, oh, lovey-dovey, and this is fantastic. Like, there's some weird stuff going on, and there's some, like, weird relationships straight off the bat, and there's, like, this pretty dodgy priest and stuff, and it's, yeah, like, it gets, it's it's pretty dark, but pretty light heart. Like, yeah, it's just, you know, I don't know. You have to be looking for something specific. That's Yeah. I, I'm very big at night, personally. I, I put all my screens away, except my Kindle, yep. but that doesn't, I don't really count that as a screen. Yeah, that doesn't count like that so i because yeah. i've got i've got kindle unlimited so i i read Lovely. To, go to, to go to sleep most yep. nights because that it's funny because you're really engaged in the story but at the same time i think you're right you get relaxed yeah and There's you know about you, it. you can sort of stop doing stuff so that's that's interesting for me to even attempt to have a look at because yeah that's that's what i i mean i don't do visual novels it's just a kindle with words so it's not yep. <laughs> no not it's anything the, it's, it's a regular novel yeah well this is just, yeah this is a novel with just a little bit more and look the visuals aren't it's not like there's big battles on screen it's pretty much just one character and then the other character pops up and they're just still images and every now it'll just swap to another still image and there's a like a sound effect of like a or something like that so there's not a lot, but there's, there's enough to make it interesting. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's pretty nice. Now that we're finished our homework activities and we're probably way further into the podcast than we intended to be, we've covered our small, small sections. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's talk about what we teased earlier in the show when Insanity mentioned the PS5 chip shortages so we all know that the ps5 is quite difficult to come across in most regions of the world insanity is from the united states and they are supposedly getting the highest amount of ps5s there and it's still quite difficult correct that is correct Mm, so yes it's a little bit unfortunate Basically, what is going on is these tiny little silicon chips are just non-existent at the moment. Now, this problem has been driven by a couple of things. There are fluctuations in the market naturally and normally. So there are 
goes through stages of oversupply and undersupply all the time, just naturally works in a wave motion. Unfortunately, we hit a natural undersupply just as the pandemic happened. Then there was quite a few fires in a bunch of warehouses in both Japan and China and Taiwan. Wow. Yeah, yeah, there was just, I don't know, there was a bunch of warehouse fires. and What a series of unfortunate yep, events. The price of silicon has is shot there, through the roof. There's a few conspiracies that you'll find on, on Reddit. I think I'm there is sure because, there like, is. what are the chances? That's like Final Destination. Yeah. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, everything that can go wrong in this industry has gone wrong. And this won't last forever. Everyone's very quick to say that this won't last forever. But will it last for half of this current generation of consoles? Possibly. They might not be on store shelves until halfway through the console's life, which is... It's it's a bit sad. I am in two minds about this cross-generation thing that they seem to be going for right now. I guess we have a PS5, so it doesn't really affect us, but I get that people can't get one, and I appreciate them bringing out uh, the new Horizon Forbidden West. I appreciate them doing the PS5 and the PS4 crossover thing I'm sure they just have to or else they just wouldn't make enough money on the game because – and they'd just probably end up going under, to be quite honest. Yeah. Because then there's – the amount of people that are able to buy and play that game is minuscule. Well, I mean, the PS5 has still sold a lot. Like, it's still one of the highest grossing consoles, whether that's because it costs more money or because they're selling a lot of units. Like, every they sell out of it. It's yeah, not, but there's not that many units. Not compared to PlayStation the 4 units. Things. Like the, yeah. the amount of PS4s that are out there, you know, in the different variations, I, I sort of agree with Laura on this one. I think the problem that, that we have, and like I, I'm not necessarily against cross-generation games. It's more the fact that I'm worried, are they going to hold back the next gen. That's, that's, that's my that's my point. I yeah. I'm worried yeah. that they're, yeah they're holding something back. The PS5 is capable of so much more than the PS4. I want to see them do more. You know, I don't want them to craft games to suit both consoles. I want to see what. Have you guys seen or played Ratchet, the latest Ratchet and Clank game? I've seen it. Not yet. I Not yet. highly recommend it if you can. Definitely one of the best games of 2021, in my opinion. It is beautiful. It does everything so well. It's just incredible in every aspect. And they could not have done that on the PS4. It just would not be the same. So, yeah, are we being held back? I, I completely agree with Dan. And I'm into, again, I'm in two minds about it. I so agree with you. I, I agree with you guys that you know, Sony needs to make money. And I mean, Sony's great. I love them. They, you know, they need to make money, but they're, they're holding me back. I've got a PS5. No, I want PS5 <laughs> you want play it. Yeah. I don't want PS4 games that are then being ported to the PS5. Yeah. that's. You know? I, yeah. I sort of feel the same way. That's my biggest, <clears throat> you know, first world problems, but Oh, of course. You know, the, yeah, I, I just don't want the console. When, okay, this is the question that's in, that's in my mind. When is it going to change? When is the chip shortage going to well, change? When, when, when are we going to move from calling it next gen, right? Because that's what they still call it, is next generation consoles, to change it to the current gen. And when are we forgetting, not necessarily forgetting the older generation, because if you remember, they released PlayStation 3 games with the PS4 for a long, a long period of time. But n- n- they were mainly smaller games from my, from my I've memory. They've already been in development. Yeah, like sports games and that sort of you know, stuff that could just run on Nintendo Anything. Switches. But... Yep. That was a small dig at the switch, even though I love it, but I hope <laughs> it's fine, it's underpowered. It is, yeah. So yeah, that's that's my I, I 
I agree with you both. It's on. I, I think the answer to your question, Dan, is when you when any old Joe is able to walk into a store and ask for a current gen system. When you can just walk into a game store and say, I want a PS5 or I want an Xbox series and they are able to give it to you and you don't have to wait a year on pre-order. How come they can't sort the bots out? Oh, scalpers. Yeah. scalpers. Yes, that is horrific. There are so many consoles that you go on like Facebook Marketplace or something that and they're just being sold for like fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Now I Sorry, run a website. I run a website. Yeah, yeah. Go on, I yeah. see how bot stuff works because when yeah. we when we opened up pre-orders for the switch, we mm-hmm. had 65 bot purchases. Wow. I, I knew that's what they were, and I cancelled every single order. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Good on you. So while, yes, we're a smaller company and we only had 65 pre-orders, right, from, yeah. from bots, oh. right? Like, don't get me wrong. I understand Amazon. Uh, what have you got over there in Sanity GameStop? GameStop. GameStop, EB Games uh, for, on our end, JB Hi-Fi, whatever. I understand they would have a much harder time of it, but it is really not hard to verify, in my opinion. And I think if you actually cared about stopping scalping and bot purchases, it's actually about validation of the order. We, we get flags. I get flags instantaneously through our system, whether or not something is potential fraud. How so do you like, know? How does it know? Because it uses that IP address based on the billing number and everything, just to just to do a huge sweep of going, have we had issues with this with this before? So all I 65 of those it. actually came up as potential fraud. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so, so I wonder, as you said, is that because you're a smaller company and you personally are able to monitor those things? Yeah, like, but uh, if you've got these consoles coming in, isn't mm. the right thing to do by your customers to verify that? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of places currently are doing first in, best dressed. You can't pre-order them. You have to physically go to the store and pick them up. And I know that changed when this whole, uh, like the Delta variant of COVID came back. We went back into lockdown and that threw a bit of a spanner in that system. But for a while there, yeah, a lot of places was just like, no, nope, you got you got to come in. Mm. Like that's the only fair way of doing it. The first person here is the first person with the PlayStation. Yeah, PlayStation uh, I, right I, now, over, PlayStation right now over here has been doing. That's how we got ours. Yep. Um, <clears throat> they've been doing uh, signups, so you have to have a PSN account. Yeah, uh, okay. Enter kind of like this um, queue, and they'll email you when that queue is available and when it's ready for you to be able to purchase. And then you have to sit there um, at the time <clears throat> and yep. then be able to purchase. Is this During directly that time. from directly Sony? from PlayStation? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Can, okay. Over in the that, US, that, they can that do that. Sense. We can't. Yeah. No, no. Obviously, that that's I PlayStation. That's, I, that's I, our I, own thing. Yeah, I tried doing it. It didn't work. Yeah. I tried that exact thing, <laughs> and then I was, <laughs> and then I was going to ask Insanity to pick it up for me. <laughs> <laughs> you should have told me. Yeah, it didn't. We were just lucky. We happened to be in a store as somebody rang up and said, can I get a PS5? And this guy's like, oh, we've actually got a few for pre-order right now. And I was standing there like waiting to buy a Switch game. And I was like, wait. Can I have one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Me? <laughs> Please. <laughs> and then I got like a phone now. call like a month later. And they're like, hey, you know that PlayStation that you ordered that was like due like two weeks from now and I was like oh yes what is it it's gonna it's been delayed by a year hasn't it and they're like do you want to come get it today and I was like oh, I'll see you in 30 minutes this <laughs> 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 just ran out so I was like yeah. I'm going gotta get it right now so yeah but it was just luck of the draw and I feel like that's that's how it will continue to be 
unfortunately. Yeah. And this, it will be cross-gen and next-gen until you're able to just go into a store and pick it up. But it's not just the gaming industry that's been affected by this. I've got a little stat here in my notes you know, for just before, podcast. Just before we get on that, Tom, yep. what I might do between now and next podcast is get mm-hmm. together a list of the easiest ways to acquire these consoles in Australia. Yeah, please. I think is uh, something that I could do relatively easier, easy, uh, because I do have the supplier details for the Series X. And- I was going to say, is the Series just as difficult? Because we've been stuck on this PlayStation right here. Is the Series just as difficult to get? Yeah, except the yeah. Series S. You can buy a yeah. Series S anyway. You can go into shop right now, buy a Series S. Nobody wants no one that. Microsoft yeah. stuffed that, up. That's the digital one. Yep. It's the digital yeah. one, but worse. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the PlayStation 5 has its digital version, but it's still as powerful as the disc version. With the Xbox, the Series S is underpowered. Yeah. Interesting choice. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't make sense. I don't know why they've no. done that. I think the reason they've done that is because of cloud gaming. Mm -hmm. And they're really betting on the fact because all their cloud gaming stuff is powered by Series X's. Yeah. Okay. If that makes sense. So I think that's where they've really, yeah, I think they're really pushing the sit like the cloud stuff. That's where I think Microsoft are going like really heavily. Mm Yeah, fair enough. So go on. Sorry about your thing. Um, Chip shortages. Other things. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, So this chip shortage, the Nintendo Switch has basically been the front runner. This This whole next generation of the Xbox series and the PS5, like the Switch is constantly outselling these consoles, which is... Like, it's a massive testament to the Switch. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's fantastic. comes with a lot of fantastic games that you can't get other places. But I think a big part of that is because the other consoles just aren't accessible. There was a point at the very end of 2021 where PlayStation sold 1,000 units in Japan for a whole week. And in contrast, the Switch sold hundreds of thousands uh hundreds. it was just it's yeah <laughs> thousands <laughs> yeah it was just it's just a joke because playstation was xbox was never in japan it was never it, it, it just didn't happen X, microsoft actually tried to purchase nintendo a long time ago that's a whole different story uh imagine that oh man yeah wouldn't the world be different yeah. but playstation was huge P, like the japanese loved playstation and they're basically just Sony has been forced to pick a market essentially. And they have picked the U S which where it's still nigh impossible to get one. Uh, it's yeah, it's, it's just crazy. So the switch now is being affected by this whole chip shortage. They've actually cut the switches sales forecast by 6% which equates to about 24 million units. So Nintendo thinks they're going to sell 24 million less Switches, which is huge because the Switch is probably going to become the highest selling gaming console of all time quite shortly. I wouldn't be surprised if it beats the PS2 by the end of the year. That's... uh, subject for probably next week's podcast we can talk about that but it's not just gaming i was going to say it's affected cars as well 7.7 million less cars were on the road last year which is arguably a good thing i'm not yeah yeah i was thinking that yes uh you know the environment's got to find the silver linings right exactly 100 percent. bicycles don't require chips yeah some new ones do i'm sure yeah (laughs) Electric cars would be suffering the most, I would have thought. Yes. Oh, okay, true. I, okay, maybe it's not a silver uh, lining. Maybe. Well, I mean, like, it. Uh, yes, I'm sure they are. I'm sure there's more chips required to build electric cars, but even petrol cars, they're basically computers these days, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. uh, many electricians, like old school, um, like mechanics and stuff, and they're 
salty at their job nowadays because they're basically yeah an electrician on on cars like all, are- auto electors yeah they're just computer nerds now yeah. <laughs> is it going to speak uh, poorly for the I guess expansion of the electric vehicle market is it going I, to be less I competitive guess. because of these chips like you have a look at Apple Apple who have now gone out and decided to make their own chip for the first time in X amount of years so they moved from Intel to their own uh, M1 silicon chip they're now going to run into shortages yeah, of course. Well. It's not it's not the suppliers specifically. It's no, it's everything. It's everything now. Like yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Every this industry has been hit hard. There's no iPads on shelves anymore because Apple have had to make a decision whether they're gonna sell iPads or iPhones. Wow. Yeah. That's that's another one of the markets that's been affected. And literally anything that runs on a on a chip, the mm-hmm. GeForce RTX 390, the graphics cards. Uh, the 390 is the latest one. 380 is still not available. 390 doesn't exist anymore, I don't think. GeForce have actually had to put the 370 back on the market just to have something there. So I don't know what the go is. I'm not super technical in these things. So I don't know if those chips are easier to get for the 370 or what the go is or if they just had excess stock, but yeah, that's their so back. There is chips that are easier to uh, build and acquire. So what, what we've actually found and some uh, technical people will uh, freak out at this news, but what's been happening with SSDs is, so whoever doesn't know what that is, solid state drive, better than the standard hard drive, it's quicker, it's more efficient, all, all these millions of things, right? Yeah. The What's been happening is companies release their SSD with X, Y, and Z chip content, yep. et cetera, and it runs at speeds of, say, the random number, 10,000. Yep. Then they release a another version without telling anybody they release another version a few months after it's had good media attention okay with chips that could do up to 10,000 yes cheeky buggers Mm. uh, there is a there is I'm not going to name names obviously but there is a SSD company at the moment that is I guess on the back foot, they are trying to defend themselves. Uh, Linus Tech, something, I can't remember the full name of the YouTube. Uh, lots of people listening to this would know who Linus is. He is extremely popular in the tech world. He he actually acquired ones that were sent to the media, ones that were yeah. released on day one, and... Cool the current stuff, and he did tests. And it's pretty shocking to see what this particular company has done with their chips and why they still think it's okay. So That's, People would rather not have things than have something that doesn't do what it's said to do. That's the, that's the problem. The thing is because they can say up to. Yes. Yeah, the word is. Yeah specific wording 100 yeah, yeah, yeah it's up to. and what what they also noticed is so they would say operate at here for about mm-hmm. 10 seconds at 10 yeah, seconds maybe. so they could get there but then yeah. they would mm-hmm. drop off almost they can't stay there yeah they, they can't sustain it so they drop off almost immediately so that's what i'm concerned about what's going to happen with the playstation the xbox etc are these companies going to go we need to get more on our sh- on these shelves because we're getting slammed. Are we going to take an easier option here? So that's that's something that's been at the back of my mind for a little while. Are we going to are we going to start seeing something similar? Have you seen right? This is uh, separate news. Have you seen the latest update from the external SSD for the Xbox Series X? 
Mm-mm. Again, don't have one. The SSD costs as much as the console now. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> well, we all know that Microsoft isn't making any money selling Xbox consoles, just like Sony's not making any money selling What's the PlayStation games consoles? that they make. The they sell them at a loss. Else. That's, yeah, that's true. But the SSD to cost as much as the console? Yeah, yeah that's a bit ridiculous. Mm. So it yeah. is a bigger SSD. It's like twice the size or something. Yeah, like, yeah, but it's not worth it. Seriously, guys, like. I mean, I want one because of how slimline it is and how well they've done it. Like, they've done a fantastic job of it. I, I'd mm-hmm. love to have one for mine because Microsoft Flight Simulator has stuffed up my storage. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. It's, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. I'm so passionate about not spending too much money on an SSD, but <laughs> I want it so bad. <laughs> no, I- yeah. yeah. No, I'm totally with you on that. Yeah, it's, a, it's every industry has been hard hit and it's I, there's no end in sight, which is the worst part. Like, we don't know. It will end. It will. Like, again, these natural waves that this industry comes and goes in, it's not a forever thing. Maybe since there's going to be less opportunity to spend money and time creating more consoles maybe these companies will focus on games instead well they're losing so much well 24 million units that the switch is not going to sell this year maybe they're going to try and make that up elsewhere meaning maybe we're going to get more games hey i would be so happy with that. There seems to be a big push recently with Microsoft and including PC in all of their advertising. So everything's Xbox and PC, whereas they used to they, they used to be quite separate. So that's, I that's feel like sense. that's one of the points of this shortage. So not, not everyone can have an Xbox, but if you have a PC, mm-hmm. if you have Windows, there is a reason for that. Yeah, there was a recent internal reshuffle of the xbox team so originally they they were this was said by phil spencer it was originally a separate entity basically within microsoft yeah but would operate on its own like it was sort of it was there but it was sort of not really there now it has been brought into the fold and that's okay. when we started to see the PC stuff come about. So I think it's partly exactly what you were saying is the fact that, that I think they need to, they don't have a choice. I also think Microsoft has potentially bet on a really good horse with cloud gaming. I know I've said cloud gaming at least 50 yeah, times. Yeah, bring it up like every podcast. It's just, I mean, like, look, it's, it's cool and it's new, but it's just not. It's not quite there yet. You know, no, when I can play that's why they call it for an extended though. period of time, I'd be happy. But I've only been able to do so for like, yeah, 10 minutes before I lose like 90% of my battery. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, but even on the even on the Series X, you can do cloud gaming. They've bet yes. so heavily on it. And I think that's why, see, I think they stuffed up under underperforming the Series X, the Series S, sorry. The yeah. Series S, I think the the mental thought there. So I'm holding a flippy. My daughter gave me this. Oh, cute! <laughs> oh, I like him. And um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's going to be the mascot now. Okay. Let's, let's call him Phil Spencer. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, Phil. So good old Phil here. No, so I. I I think Microsoft is, and and the reason I'm bringing up cloud gaming right now is because I think Microsoft think this chip shortage is going to go on for a long time. And that's why they are so heavily pushing the cloud gaming aspect. And that's potentially why they went with a completely different chip set for the Series S. So if you Mm -hmm. think about it, you can get Series S. Like you, you go into a shop right now. Yep. Not right now. Later. Tomorrow. Later. Tomorrow. And <laughs> you, you can, unless you're in uh, WA, if you're listening to us in WA, go right now. You can get <laughs> a Series S straight away. Yeah. 
So there's, I just feel there's a lack of clarity as, as, as into the strategy of what is happening yes. right now. No, oh, I agree. Yeah, I until I talked to you, Dan, I did not know that the Series S was less powerful. There's seems to be this. Yeah, there's a lack of communication there, isn't there? It's not, it's not well known, and I'm pretty informed on these things i would say definitely more than your average joe and definitely more than your average mum of a seven-year-old who's never played a game in her life who's buying her kids a console for christmas yeah um nothing against the mums of the seven-year-olds who haven't played games but they just you know that they don't they don't know as much about the xboxes as i do and even i'm misinformed so look i think it's smart by Microsoft to do that and have something because having something is having better than having nothing. Having a backup is. But yeah. I still, I don't, know. I don't know. It is. It is what it is, I guess. And hopefully, I like your idea, Laura. I really hope that we get more solid games. That's a that, that would be fantastic. Well, if I was like Nintendo, I just think of Nintendo because that's my favorite. But if I was them and I'm looking at their stats, that the gonna lose 24 million worth of sales then and also then like the time and effort and a lot of money goes into making those 24 million units Mm -hmm. so there's gonna be like a little you know surplus you could like put that towards the money that you would have spent creating those 24 million units you could spend making an epic game yeah, or a couple, or so, only, yeah, if you sell the only what problem like with that. 60, 72 million games, then roughly similar price. And hopefully, anyway, then you're on, if on the you go. Think about that though, how long does it take to make a game? Yeah, years and years, yeah, exactly. that's true. Yeah, so that's and a good the, one. That's that's the only pitfall, I guess, I see there because I half, I half think Laura's right. But what I'm worried about is she's too right. And what I mean by that is they are going to bring stuff out like that too fast. To, to sort of try and help through that period. Mm-hmm. And it's going to, and they're going to use big brands to do it. Yep, absolutely. And I, know, s- I know you guys love Halo, but like they drip fed us that hard because they needed something. Yeah. Agreed. 100%. You know what I did last yeah. night? It was meant to come out like a year ago. Like Xbox had no exclusives for so long. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah long, long and, time. Yeah. Which is a shame. But that's a, that's a, another topic for another day as well. Oh, something <laughs> I need to bring up. Okay. Go on, Mr. Rant, man. Roland is still not present. Oh, ah. I was going to ask you that just before. Roland. When we Roland, were talking about the mascot, and I was like, I wonder how Roland's going. Roland, yeah, no, nah, Roland is not at the book. I wasn't going to use that as an example of rushing games for once, but it is. That is a perfect example of. I'm happy they waited game. with Halo because, as far as yeah. I'm yeah. concerned, no, no, they should, but they still drip fed it. Like, is I there... am all for waiting. Like, I would rather wait five more years. Yeah, hundred percent. Then be like. Like, imagine if Breath of the Wilds 2 came out, which is I'm, like, so excited for. If that came out and there was a Roland situation, like, I would just be so disappointed. I would be as disappointed as I was when I was, like, 11 and I got Guitar Hero for Christmas and I'd been waiting for it all year and then the dongle didn't work. Or, or, I'm sorry. Or you had, to, you had to buy the buttons separately. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, 11 year old you. Oh man, that was yeah, tough times. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, by the way, uh, Roland is a butcher in Cyberpunk. So yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we talk about it so, we talk about it so often. Roland is a regular. Yes. Roland. <laughs> Roland is meant to be uh, an NPC in Cyberpunk, and he's not at the shop. He's just not there. So, so he's, he's actually not an NPC? He's a yeah. regular no-show he's a, he's on a N- this show. He's an NPC, a non, uh, non, wait, non, non-playable character. He's a non, <laughs> non-playable character. Isn't that a double negative, which means he is a playable character? 
Mm. Are you just meant to be playing as Roland this whole time and you don't actually know? That's why, because you are Roland. Oh, you go. Existential <laughs> crisis shit going on here. <laughs> Who am I? Oh. oh, my Lord. I knew I was strangely addicted to meats and things. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. On that note, I think we have rambled long enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody, let's just give a huge thank you to Insanity. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It was, it was so pleasure. fun. Yes, it was. Nice to have another girl on the show, Laurie. Yes. Yes. Strong females rule the world, let's be honest. You guys yes. can rule our podcast too. Hopefully we didn't make you more insane than your name already makes you out to be. <laughs> no. No, I'm good. Nice. <laughs> Reach the full peak. With that. a bit of luck, insanity <laughs> isn't scared away and she will join us sometime again in the future. It was absolutely our pleasure to have you on here. Thank you so much for your insight and you. Uh, everything you contributed. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I really appreciate it and it was so so much fun. It's uh, fun, huh? Yeah, it is, yeah, it is a good time. We just basically hang out with friends and talk about video games. That's that's what this podcast is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. We appreciate all of you. Oh, wait, wait. We oh. need to give away like a secret Ooh. word or something, don't we? Yes. For a game. We do. Yes. So are we doing uh, a secret word again? Yeah. What was the what was the uh, game? Uh Dan, you're in charge of games. Something versus <laughs> chess. Hold on. Oh God. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. that was last week's. No, last week we said Whispering Willows on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, last week we did say Whispering oh, Willows on actually the podcast. We actually didn't say Battle vs. Chess on the podcast. Yeah, okay. that is what we're saying this podcast, Battle vs. <laughs> chess. Yes. If you want some, message it to us. And you got some. Yes. If you want a free game. Uh, this is first in best dressed. Ah, I like the PlayStation situation. Yep. Like yes. that. And the if, yes, DM us a VAT code word and you get yourself a free indie on your PC. We've chosen indies oh. for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons is it pretty much means anybody with a PC is fairly likely to be able to play the games that we're sort of picking. So we're trying to keep it accessible yes mm. fair across the board 100 yeah. percent. oh yep thank you guys for throwing that in i was uh gonna end things we Good almost job, forgot oh my god <laughs> uh, and hopefully we don't forget anything else because we're actually going now thank you everyone bye bye bye, bye.